Hey guys, Felix and Pete here again, back for another episode of Is It Called Wine Time? Is it? Uh, at this point, it looks like it might be. Uh, is it? We're, we're still taking comments, so please uh, keep them coming. We're, we're having a great chuckle, actually. Yeah, the suggestions um, have been good. Yeah, um, but at the moment, it's, it's working need... title is still Is It Called Wine Time? Yeah, somehow that's still winning. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. onto the wine. So today, uh, we thought that we'd uh, share with you one of our favorite wines. This is something that uh, Pete and I uh, have, have enjoyed multiple times over the past months, years. Um, it is the Marcel Lapierre Morgon uh, Beaujolais 2018 vintage. Uh, Pete took this bottle home last night, as you can see. It's already four fifths of the way I did down. That. Yeah, yep. Pete, good I job. did that. Good job. That was you, buddy. Yeah, yep. Um, anyway, it was good. so. I enjoyed it. Gratefully, he's brought it back in, which is very kind of him. Yeah. Thank you. So we can both have a look at it. Um, we can all share. And, and what's interesting as well is that obviously this wine's been open for 24 hours now, and it's mm. nice to see the evolution of a wine and how it can change from day one to day two, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. yeah, so... Because it seems like it has changed. Yeah, I mean, obviously I didn't try it yesterday, but it's, um, I, I know this one reasonably well, and I know that my first experience of it was that classic um, Beaujolais Gamay kind of vibrancy and brightness, uh, and that sort of beautiful cherry fruit character with a little of the classic Morgon savouriness underneath. Um, mm. Yeah, so... More savoury today? Yeah. Yesterday was much more fruit drive, uh, and much brighter fruit. Today is a little bit darker fruited. Yeah, I would say that's dark cherry in there. Yeah. And, and I always get this um, this note with, with Beaujolais, particularly Morgon, but almost all Beaujolais, there's a sort of slightly medicinal edge to it. There's a kind of cherry medicine character, which mm. sounds horrible, but it's actually really beautiful. And it's that, you know, that sort of cough syrup that you had when you were a kid. It's that kind of, um, yeah, sort of cherry medicine character, which, which I find really engaging and quite nostalgic actually um yeah so it's got that on it but it's definitely darker fruited um that i remember yeah it is there there is that kind of mild medicinal thing yeah happening. and there's but a pleasing it is it's yeah. pleasant and there's a and there's a kind of um like a cured meat sort of charcuterie kind of note coming yeah which wasn't now. floating about yesterday no the savoriness um wasn't there but i think it's adding a little bit more detail and complexity to the wine today so i'm kind of thankful that that is there um because it's mm. There's such Wonder amazing wines. There's so much depth and complexity on a wine like this. Um, beautifully structured tannins. They're so fine and delicate, and they kind of just hang about and, and only really emerge at the back um, to provide a bit of shape and structure as, as the wine kind of finishes. Um, the, the, it finishes the, long. The purity of fruit is is indescribable. It is just so such a perfect example of, of uh, the Gamay grape uh, from this region. and. You know, I think in the hands of a lesser producer, it wouldn't sing quite so loud, but uh, Domaine Marcel Lapierre is one of the most uh, incredible producers of Beaujolais. In fact, one of the original gang of four, as they were known. Um, so that's Lapierre, Foyard, Tevenet, and Guy Breton. Guy Breton. Um, they were the sort of four trailblazers, I suppose, uh, back in the sort of 70s and 80s that were really kind of transformed Beaujolais into the region that it is now. Um, and also championed the idea of uh, minimal intervention winemaking over there, so, uh, which they still do today. Um, Domaine Lapierre, Marcel himself has passed away, but his, uh, the domain is still run by his son and granddaughter, uh, and they are still carrying on his principles uh, and making these exceptional wines uh, that, that you know, we just absolutely love. Yeah, they're so good. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting to see it on day two. Yeah, it was very nice of me to bring in. It um, was very nice of you yeah. to bring in, thank you. Yes, thank you. pat on the back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's good, it's worth looking at. It's a wine that we've definitely enjoyed and is something that we think you guys really get on with as well, especially these things starting to cool down, cooler months, Beaujolais. Perfect. Hand in hand. It's a light red, marriage. obviously, but you know, even, yeah. even in, the, in the cooler months, you definitely um, get on board with something like this. Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, you don't need a big, heavy red to feel nice and warm this will absolutely fill you with delight and oh, my phone is still on <laughs> that's professionalism i know but it's all right episode two two um three we're still learning I don't, um, anyway the point is happy. the point is that uh this is a wine that if you haven't experienced uh beaujolais before this is a perfect example of of yeah. the the crew standard and and the wines that are being produced in this region so um, jump in, have a go, because honestly, it's one of the best wines that we've tried in a long time. So enjoyable. Um, yeah. So that's it. That's our Marcel Lapierre Morgan story. Yep. Is it called Wine Time?
is it called Wine Time? At the moment, it is still. Yeah. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I uh, will catch you next time on Is It Called Wine Time? <laughs> See ya. Bye.